Hi, good morning, Chris. Sorry to interrupt your show, but we, we did just get some uh, news again about developments regarding uh, coronavirus. And one of the, uh, I guess, efforts that has been made by the medical community is to reach out to experts around our region to try to get a perspective on how Guam's experience might be more similar to uh, communities uh, in, in, in the Pacific, in Asia, uh, as we kind of worry about what direction we need to go. We're, we're using a lot of curves and, and data that come from Washington, from, from New York, uh, on the east coast of the United States. But on uh, Wednesday of next week, a uh, call out has been made to the doctors of the Guam <coughs> medical community to attend a international uh, coronavirus uh, symposium being hosted by uh, the Taiwan Ministry of Foreign Affairs and uh, led by the Taiwan Adventist Hospital uh, medical team. And so uh, doctors on Guam were to have um, confirmed their attendance yesterday to attend this uh, international uh, teleconference. And it looks like a, a, a good number of the doctors on Guam will be attending to listen to how Taiwan as a community has done uh, a job of protecting their people from uh, this virus and maintaining uh, their economy open. Uh, among the questions that we're going to be looking for is um, what how do they allow for more social uh, interaction? Uh, how do they allow for you know, people to go to church, to pray, to go to school, uh, to do the more normal things that we in the United States uh, seem very stuck uh, right now not being able to do? So it, unless things have changed over the last uh, 24 hours since you and I last spoke, yeah. um, we, we need we need uh, some guidance from people that actually live in our... In our uh, hemisphere? Hemisphere. And so that's that's the, the the news, and I think there's been a number of people that have confirmed their attendance. How many doc? How many doctors have, uh, are going to be attending this uh, symposium? And uh, second part of the question is, what do you think we can take away from how Taiwan has fared against COVID nineteen? Well, so so number one, it, it looks like a, a large number of doctors are, are are slated to attend. But again, this is a teleconference, so not, none of the doctors, as far as I know, are going to be giving any presentations. We're we're uh, going to be hosted uh, by the Taiwan government, and apparently there will be a large number of, uh, I guess, government officials who will be also attending. I don't know if they'll be speaking. It does look like the governor of Guam and the speaker of the Guam legislature have both confirmed their attendance, uh, and, the, and many of the doctors on, on our island, including Dr. Nguyen, who's the president of, of, the, Guam, of the American Medical Center and the head of the Physician Advisory Committee, uh, has confirmed his attendance. And this is a teleconference, so no one's physically right. going to Taiwan. Um, uh, I guess the reason why we're, we're, we're excited about this, but also uh, informing the public is, you know, as, as we try to figure out what to do today, right, everybody's concerned about today and certainly tomorrow, um, we're not out of the woods yet, and we do want to get out of there, and we're looking for all the solutions. Uh, but the information, a lot of that we're using and the things we're paying attention to are going on in time zones many, many uh, thousands of miles away from us. We're listening to people that are struggling in their home states and they have to pay attention to the things that are relevant to them. Uh, we need to do the same. This weekend, today, right now, our hospitals are in trouble, right? The, the Guam Regional Medical Center has been on divert mode for the last three days because of heart attacks and strokes. We need to be very careful as a community <clears throat> not to think that coronavirus is, is the, the problem. This weekend, the problem is you bozos uh, eating yourself into a heart attack. Um, it's, it's you guys getting uh, running into t telephone poles because you drank too much alcohol. Yeah, but is it the governor's office muting reporters and giving me anxiety, stressing me out? Is that part of the equation, too? You know, I, I had to do some deep breathing last night, Doc, after I rewatched that press conference. I saw that, and it looks like those guys were robbing a bank for the evening. It was. I know, with the mask, and they're sitting there or not. You know, it reminded me of, like, the Middle East when they get those guys and they get in the little videos and everyone's just sitting there with their mask not saying anything. And and then somebody's head gets chopped off. Yeah, that, I think that was the case. <laughs> oh, the media's head got chopped off. But <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I think you guys should stage a protest. It looks like, though, the Catholic Church is going to do that this morning. I, I understand there might be uh, some civil dis disobedience going on. So, yeah, as we go into this weekend where there are cracks showing... And I think our community's patience regarding uh, this lockdown and, and, and the, I guess, the plans for the near future, and, and I'm not condoning it, right? I'm not saying that this is a good idea to enforce a <clears throat> draconian lockdown and violate people's civil liberties, 
nor am I saying that it's a great idea to just open up and then not know what our medical capacity is. Right. Yeah. And, and certainly, I'm I'm not saying that it's a great idea to uh, somehow be disrespectful to, to our mili military neighbors who have brought a tremendous amount of military medicine uh, resource and, and have indicated that they, they are our neighbors and that they will help us if the if the problems arise. Uh, I think that we should look at all the situations we're in and be very careful not to assume that we know better and then don't have a really good plan on what we're going to do next week, right? So the, the, the conference with Taiwan on Wednesday gives us a chance to speak to people who have been living it longer than we have. The Taiwan people responded back in January. The Taiwan people suffered through this back in January, and they, they've been watching China like a hawk because they suffered through SARS, and China doesn't really like them, and China is 81 miles away from Taipei. So these people know what they're talking about. And not a lot of them have died. Not a lot of them have really gotten sick. Um, they're still struggling to figure out what to do, but the economy is way more open than ours. And now they're reaching out to us to say, hey, look, if you need some advice, we'll help you. So they're, they're being generous enough, and, and we're taking that as, the, as such because we're not getting charged. As far as I know, none of the physicians or anybody else who's participating is getting charged. And we've seen that Taiwan has actually helped other international communities with both material supplies as well as uh, mm -hmm. uh, professional uh, guidance and, and help. So um, we're, we're calling on the people of Guam to, to, to be patient. Uh, don't, don't eat yourself into a stroke or a mm -hmm. heart attack. So, so, Doc, you said that GRMC is on divert, right? Right? You said yeah, they're on yes, divert? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they've been so, on divert for the last three days. And if you remember, they were on divert back in January and mm -hmm. February because we've always we've always had this problem. Our hospitals yeah. have been pushed to the limit just mm -hmm. by our non-communicable diseases. Right. Coronavirus mm -hmm. is just the latest problem. So we're sending patients that uh, want to go into the ER at GRMC, but because they're so busy and they're overloaded, we're sending these patients over to GMH, the Right, and, and then the designated you know, the COVID hospital. Right, the GMH guys are trying their best to, to accommodate, so they're seeing more uh, heart attacks and strokes than they are coronavirus patients, which may may be an okay thing. But if the concern is that the surge is coming, that's why we're going to extend the lockdown for another month. This is not a good good deal because GMH has to be ready for the surge. Right, mm -hmm. and I think one one of the cracks that's really showing is that it looks like the, the Teddy Roosevelt is leaving. And it's a good possibility that the government of Guam is not interested in any more ships coming, and so those military medicine people are going to leave. And at that point, I would say Guam, Guam is in a really bad situation where we're not capable at this point in time with our limited uh, human uh, medical resources, particularly since the DOE nurses walked off the job, and I sure hope they're not getting paid uh, to stay home today because... Uh, they were threatened with their license being removed if they didn't do their job, and they're not doing their job. They're not helping at the hospital, right? Wait, they're, so the DOE nurses to threatened to walk off the job? job. Uh, they, 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 you know, the, the union claims that they were being violated their human rights because they didn't get a 13-week orientation to help people fight coronavirus at uh, GRMC, and they didn't want to work at GMH. And so now they're, uh, I think, washing cars at, uh, in the parking lot over public <laughs> health. But that's not what RNs do. RNs take care of sick people. And generally, if they have to work in a hospital, they figure out how to do that. They don't ask for a 13-week orientation. So I, I, I would insist that uh, public servants who don't work, who don't serve the public, don't get paid. But, yeah, we're going to fight different fights uh, through the week. The big fight is um, not to maybe completely lose patience with the government's ability to try to figure out how to do things and that they sit patiently uh, to wait for the media to ask the appropriate question mm -hmm. then we should too wait patiently to see if they'll give us the appropriate answers mm -hmm. particularly after we all talk to taiwan where trust me those people fight with each other too if you've ever seen their legislature yeah, yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah i like wanted to backtrack on something you said you said that the government wasn't uh, interested in taking any more uh ships are you uh, hearing that there was another um possibility that another ship would be coming to guam the reagan right Sabrina, Sabrina, there are 26 ships in the pacific fleet that have uh, sailors with coronavirus on it including mm -hmm. i think the frank cable which is parked down in upper uh, harbor uh, with some very old uh, merchant marines who have high blood pressure and gout. But, uh, yeah, th we understand that the Ronald Reagan is parked in Japan, and Japan mm -hmm. is in a public health state of emergency, and right. I think they want uh, 
the Ronald Reagan to get the hell out. But I mean, I'm, I'm just suggesting that we have right now on Guam probably more ICU capabilities because of military medicine and also because the Guam Memorial Hospital medical team has done such a tremendous job of, of bolstering what we have. Mm -hmm. We have probably more ICU capabilities in order to deal with the surge than most American communities, um, period. Uh, we may have actually as many ICU capabilities per person on Guam at this point in time as Germany, and, and Germany is doing very, very well handling uh, coronavirus, and they, they've done a good job of reopening their economy. So from, if you just want to talk about this from an economic standpoint, today would have been the best day to open up the churches because, uh, you know, th right now the military is spending most of the money to help people and the federal government to help us stay open. I think we talked a little bit about this yesterday. Yeah. But, Doc, you know, but, but I know that the governor had said that uh, because she's, you know, uh, BFS with the admiral, that um, after Roosevelt left, that those military assets uh, that you're talking about were going to remain on Guam to assist us in our COVID-19 response. Is I there something you know that we don't know? Has that changed? I think, I think that what they meant is they might leave the tents up for a while and they might leave all the machines, but certainly I think all the people are going to go home if, if there's no aircraft carrier here. And so it'll be like the Jigo amusement park uh, <laughs> roller coaster. Uh, or, or any Memories. That the government of Guam gets, you know, where they, they don't have a plan on how to use it and they don't have personnel right. that are willing to get thirteen uh, less than 13 weeks of orientation mm -hmm. to show up and work. I mean, that, that get, keeping their military assets the physical assets would be like having DOE nurses. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they don't. They don't get the job done. And the governor just toured the emergency, uh, the expeditionary medical facility this week. The p pictures are all posted on the Joint Region Marianas uh, uh, Facebook page. And even Dr. Mike Cruz, he met with some special task force of uh, that the military has. I think they're from somewhere else, not not from here. And I believe it is like a team of physicians and and, and nurses. Yeah, they're here, and these are people. Mm -hmm. These are doctors and nurses from around the country. Mm -hmm. They're being taken away from their home, uh, you know, their homes, uh, to to take care of us. It, it it is, I think, a hardship that they're not going to extend very long if there are no uh, sailors, you know, on aircraft carriers here. Um, I, I don't know what the governor has told the, uh, you know, Joint Region Marianas, but I, I think from the medical community side, their being here helps us, and they're. If, if they've agreed and they will be good neighbors and help us if we need the help, I'm not saying that they're going to do our jobs. I'm just saying that, that them physically being here and capable of helping us certainly should be counted as an asset and something that should be uh, valued. I mean, if, we're, if, 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 if anything, we just should be thankful, um, you know, that, that they're here. And, and um, ho hopefully, again, there isn't a negative message being sent out by people who in Adeloup are trying to negotiate maybe a better situation uh this is maybe about as good as it gets if they're going to be good neighbors mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we, we, right. we need icu capabilities with icu nurses and doctors we, we don't need tents yeah okay okay doc we got to run uh, top of the hour Thank you. okay doc. doc dr vince akimoto uh let's keep it on the phones here and go to mungie town where uh mayor alan gotta uh you had a great turnout yesterday 